Hey alrighty, well it's uh, late enough, it's actually about 10.30 uh, Just been um, in here today, uh, mopping all the damn floor and everything in this house before I, uh, it's literally a week until I uh, hand it back um, Yeah, you know, got sidetracked with a lot of other uh, things involving uh, business thoughts and whatnot. Um, started looking around at a few other places and what they charge and stuff like that. Um, the very ones that this uh, guy I was working for for two days in the uh, fancy pants area the very ones they use come up on Google AdWords. My sister has looked into all that stuff for their business. Um, <laughs> what I've seen of all the Google AdWords, you know, select a budget of between twenty and forty dollars a day. A day? What? I can get finance on a brand spanking new van. Like I'm talking a brand new one. Ten bucks a day for the manual. Twelve bucks a day. For the automatic, uh, and that's you know rip-off prices, dealership finance. But it's one of these ones where you know it's almost like you can just pay that for five years and then more or less just bang hand it back, almost like a lease situation. Um, you know, one of these things where it's just a finance package, and, and you know you have it for five years, you use it, and then bang, you can change it out for a new one and just keep on going. I assume that's how it's like. I haven't actually visited the dealership, but I've been getting a lot more nitty-gritty with a lot more stuff. And I've realised a couple of things. I heard stuff from my father um, a few years ago, and he claimed that you can get a normal van as in a people mover van, you know, I'm talking like one of those ones with seven seats, eight seats, something like that. Um, and you can just rip the seats out of it and it's not a problem. So I looked into that on the official Roads Authority's website. And it's true. It is true. Um, it's, it's really a case of you tie yourself in knots if you decide you want the front, you know, the, the driver's seat, the passenger seat, and some of them have got a seat in the middle as well, if it's a bench seat sort of a thing. Some of them have got three individual seats in the front, some of them only got two, um, but a lot of them actually got three in the front. Uh, if you just keep those, that's fine. You tie yourself in knots when you keep those, and then one row of seat in the back, but not the others, you know. And it's sort of almost like if you want to turn it um, into a delivery van, you either have all the seats in the back and it's a people mover, or you get rid of all the seats. So you either have the whole lot still there, or you remove the whole stinking lot out of the back and just have the front seats. And if you have any combination other than that, you might need a little certificate, but the reality is not, not a going to happen. I'll just clear the whole lot out. Um, and also, uh, I'd have to get a cargo barrier. I didn't really look at the prices, although they're not terribly grand bloody prices. I think I forget. They've I expect them to be about $300. I didn't see what the actual prices were, but I've got a strange feeling it might be a little bit more than that. <laughs> might be about five or six hundred. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, they've just got lugs on the floor that they, you know, screw them into and all that sort of thing. Um, there are a few places in the capital that sell them, and I assume they install them as well. And to avoid any entanglements, I just think it's one of these things that you just get them to install it all, you know, and then you know it's all approved and up to scratch. Um, why would I go for a people mover as opposed to a delivery van? Easy. First of all, delivery vans do a massive amount of mileage. Not always, I must admit, not always. But there's too many of them that they get a lot of bloody use and they do a lot of miles. Not all of them, you know, but half of them, like 
fucking hell, I've seen ones on there that are eight years old. They've done 410,000 kilometres. I shit you not. Um, <laughs> whereas if you were to get a, you know, and there's a few of them that are only done 140,000 that are six years old, um, you know, seven years old, five years old, you know, that have done 140,000. Um, but as a result of A, being a delivery van, um, and B, being newer, you're going to pay more. Uh, and the strange thing you'll notice is you will have a delivery van. Um, take, for example, the Hyundai, the one I'm most likely to go and get quite a number of because they are very common. It will be very easy to get past. You have the option of manual, automatic, diesel, or petrol slash gasoline. Uh, and you have the H1 or the iLoad, which is your delivery van one. Then you've got what they call the iMax. Absolutely identical. Just seats in the back. But you can rip the seats out. But it's the same roof height, it's the same everything. The thing is, if you get one with seats in the back, first of all, there is a higher chance that they have done fewer kilometres. And some of them, you know, have still done 100,000 k's, but if you were to go and buy a delivery van one, it may have done 140,000 k's, it may have done 300,000 k's, it may have nearly done 400,000, but there's so many of them that have done over 250,000, you know, k's. And it's just because they do so many more miles because they're a delivery van and they've been delivering so much shit. As opposed to sitting in someone's garage most of its life and then just going to the supermarket and doing the school run to pick up the kids from school or take them into football practice. You know what I'm saying? It, it's just, it's done bugger all. Plus the prices are quite a lot less for what's essentially the same bloody van and all you got to do is unbolt the seats and it's a delivery van. The roof's the same height, the thing's the same length, it's got the same doors, it's got the same frickin' engine. More often the people movers are an automatic. Because that's what soccer mums prefer. But, you know, it just hasn't had as much wear and tear. And while I see some of these Hyundai eye loads would be four and a half to six thousand dollars. Um I haven't seen any IMAXs. Uh, I think I might have seen one. But I've seen other ones that are Kias. Now, Kia is another South Korean thing that's actually been bought out by Hyundai recently, but I've seen 2008 models of those that are people movers. Now, they are a shitbox car, no question about it. But I am not joking when I say I'm seeing them go for $2,500 for a 2008 model. Eight years old. Two and a half thousand, and one of them was converted to run on propane. Two and a half grand. You you just can't believe it. And the costs, you know, the amount of money you, you make versus what it's going to cost to get that, put a tow bar on the back, put a cargo barrier in it, and rip the seats out. You would not see a vehicle that could possibly pay itself off any quicker if you it is. I'm not going to go into it because I'm not going to give away any real secrets here, but you would not believe me if I told you how fast it would pay itself off. You'd just tell me I'm just fucking hallucinating on mushrooms because you can't believe that with the total costs all added up, you know, which by the time you pay your 20% roadworthy, you pay for your cargo barrier, you get your, your tow bar on the back, blah, blah. Still, this thing would pay itself off so quick, you wouldn't actually believe it to be possible. Uh, and even though they're a shit vehicle, and you know they might be eight years old, and they might make it to 15 years old, they might only make it to 13 years old, you know, you get five years, you get seven years out of it, it doesn't matter, because the thing paid it off itself off so shockingly fast that if I told you guys how quick it paid itself off, you'd think I'm full of shit. So, if you get five years out of it and you just put the thing in the fucking scrap metal, it doesn't matter. 
you know, because it costs a lot less than getting a dedicated delivery van. And there's quite a chance that I might go looking for an IMAX knowing that it's identical pretty much to an iLoad, but instead of having a bare steel floor, it's got a carpeted floor, and I'm going to be buying it at bugger all the price comparative to an iLoad with a lot less people bidding on it, um, done a lot less miles, you know, and yeah. I would prefer a manual because I know that they're going to not blow themselves up when I start towing a heavy trailer behind it. Now, on the subject of trailers, um, I have also been looking into what size trailers you can get on the same government website. Holy fucking cow! I couldn't believe the size that I can actually get these trailers to be made full size. I can have them carry up to four and a half tonne. The bloody van's not more likely to take any more than... I know the i takes 2 tonne, my car takes 2.3 tonne, the standardised Falcon, that other thing that I keep driving around that's my father's old machine that doesn't get very much used at all these days, um, that takes 1.8 tonne. I'm not even going to deal with the bloody GM because I believe the GM rating is only 1.2 tonne. And I don't really like GMs to be quite honest. Um, I've just seen too many of them with too many bad plastics and I know enough guys who can tell me enough stories who have been GM drivers for years. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I never really trusted GM. If you've seen the Fords in Australia and you're an American, you will have a shit fit at how good the Fords are over here. And then you'll have another shit fit when you see that you'll pay probably three times what you pay in the States. Um, <laughs> for a passenger car with a Ford badge on it. Anyways, getting back to the point, I've been having a look at some of these trailers and they are fucking unbelievable. The size you can get is... It will blow your mind. The ones I could legally put on the road, I'm not joking, I can get three queen mattresses back to back. Not Flame and three individually side by side. You can put three queen mattresses one behind the other and still have a foot left. And that's the size that I can get built. That is bigger than half of the bloody trucks that I've... Well, not half of the trucks, but some of the trucks at work. That is larger storage space than those trucks have. And all I need to do is tow it behind a regular vehicle without all the bullshit of truck registration, without $800 starter motors and, you know, parts that are, you know, just $450 bill for every single tyre, you know, it's, you've got that similar capacity without paying $450 a tyre and $800 for a starter motor or an alt motor and bugger knows how much for to replace a windscreen. You know, this is a thing. It's... I've found an alternative route. And you may say, oh, well, furniture's going to be heavy. Well, the reality is, a lot of furniture today isn't heavy. You know, this sitting here, I shouldn't... Oh, fuck it, there's one here. I don't want to lift the one with my laptop on it. This is a three-seat couch, right? You can't see it, it's a dark navy blue. Look at that. Look, that is up past my knee, and I'm holding it with one hand. It's a three-seat couch. They're not very heavy at all. In fact, you rarely find one that's any more than about 100 pounds. Um, and this is an older one, by the way. This thing is about eight years old. So that is heavier than a lot of the ones that I've been involved moving around. Um, one of the recliners here is, uh, well, basically uh, out of the same set and it's, it's fading fast. Um, but this is the thing, you know, don't think there's going to be any more than about a tonne and a half when you load a whole tray of that size full of stuff. Because a lot of this furniture these days, you've got a lot of things... Well, it's like, for instance, this thing here. 
it looks all like it's hardwood. No, it's actually shitbox pine with a stain on it. And that's a lot of the time what they do, you know. You go and look at it and you say, oh, geez, that's hardwood. It's got that dark tinge. No, it's just pine with a stain on it. It's just the same sort of crap that they make 4x2s out of. It's just softwood, you know. And the other one is chipboard, which is bloody glorified wheat mix. It's about the weight of flaming cardboard, you know. Same with mattresses. I routinely carry out single bed mattresses on my own. And on occasion, especially if I've got a reasonable clearance and uh, like a nice sliding door that I don't have, you know, good clearance that I can get through um, and there's no trees in the bloody driveway or any stupid shit like that. I've been known to pick up queen size double mattresses and just walk them out myself on my own. You know, and this is a thing, they're light enough to do that, unless they're one of those bloody latex ones which feel like that someone dropped it in the river and it's full of water. They're ridiculously heavy, those stupid things. <laughs> you have one guy at the front carrying it and the other guy at the back carrying it, and don't worry, the middle's nearly sagging on the friggin' ground. They're shits of things. And certain furniture lines are actually discontinuing them because they're so heavy that a lot of people buy them and, and a batman they even get them inside their house. And trust me, they're bastards of things. <laughs> Anyways, pure fact of the matter is that these size trailers, I can get older second-hand ones, two and a half, three thousand dollars, and that's not a joke. Um, some of these are actually made to, quite a few of them actually, um, second-hand are available like this. They're actually made to carry cars. They're an enclosed car trailer. It's for you know your rake car or your show car that you don't want any stone chips on driving to the car show. You know, you, or your pristine bloody Corvette that's blah 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 or whatever. The only thing that they uh, don't have that I would like to do is there's a little gap in the bloody floor in between the two wheel. Line. Well, I'd fill that up with a sheet of plywood in about frickin' five minutes with a cordless drill and, and uh, circular saw <laughs> before the plywood and we'd be in business, you know. There, a lot of these ones that I'm seeing that are about two and a half, uh, it's basically 7.4 metres that I can get one built to, uh, but a lot of these ones I'm, that in feet is, oh shit. Oh, at 21, 22 foot. Um, but having said that, a lot of the ones I'm seeing are 13, 14, 15, 16 foot uh, long inside. Um, and these ones, you know, if you get a second hand one that's not too bad, you know, you'd be looking two and a half, three thousand dollars. Uh, there is a place that builds them brand new and they actually build a bunch of these things and just have them sitting in their yard ready to go and you can buy them brand new, you make a call and bang, you know, this is a place in the capital that manufactures them, you make a call and half the time they've actually got one in stock already, but failing that, if you want it tweaked a little bit or you want one that's different custom, they can build a custom one between two and four weeks wait, but in that you're back to paying about ten or $11,000 and you won't get it for less than $9,000. Um, so, you know, you look at that and go, oh, whoa, this is going to cost me a bit, you know. And it's, it's one of these things, I think, that you would go and buy a second-hand one for two and a half, three grand. And, hey, if it's bloody 14, 15 foot long, you've got to get enough done with it anyway. And... Uh, you know, at a later point when it's paid itself off, then you can think about getting a nice new one. You know, if you even do that, because why go and spend 10 grand on a bloody 15 foot one if you can get a second hand 14 foot one for 3 grand? You know what I'm saying? It just sort of, yeah. Anyways, <clears throat> been interesting looking at a lot of this stuff. Um, I don't know if I'd convert it to a delivery van that'll be required to have a cargo battery, but I just think for pure 
insurance purposes and employee health and safety, blah, blah, you'd sort of be expected to anyway. So, uh, but I do like the idea of, of getting one of these vans. Now I know that I can just go ahead and rip all the seats out. And the only thing that would possibly be a pain in the ass is lack of tie-off points. But I can tell you right now that half of these, this guy who was doing this stuff for, he had basically no tie-off points except the frame of the van. And there was like four little eyelets mounted on the... Uh, <coughs> they had like a little clip thing and an eyelet sort of... It's like a D-shaped eyelet and it just lays flat. And I mean, it's a glorified bit of bloody fencing wire, really speaking, that's all it is. Um, on this little... What's essentially a saddle clamp. Um, and the whole van's got like four of them in it. Just so you can hook your cargo net, you have a cargo net that hooks to those four points. You know, and that's all they have in a lot of these vans that are proper bona fide delivery vans. And with some of these car trailers, they've actually got a lot of them. You've got these slots that, like these RHS, like square tubing, that runs along the wall with all these slots in it. And you've also got in, in a few of them um, this like another square framing with a bit of sort of zigzag framing going between it that's just square steel tubing that probably sits up about yeah, how tall it was, about 8 or 10 inches um, and that's to sort of be able to put, what they do is they put a strap that goes from that over the car's tyre around the back of the car's tire and then back onto that and it stops the car from rolling around. You know, of course they put the park brake on and all that, but you've only got a really secure load when you strap the front tires. And you might have seen guys involved in car repossessions doing the exact same thing and even guys who do car carrying doing the exact same things. Guys with tilt trays do that sort of stuff. And so they have these rails for it. And of course that's what you'd tie off any straps to, you know, plus I've got to work out how this system on the side works um, that they have. I think you can put a this bars you can buy that will slot between the steel tubing that's about sort of neck height, shoulder height on either side. Um, there's some sort of bar attachment you can hook in and it'll hook to either side. And then that'll be something else to tie off to sort of thing. But um, I've had some other bizarre ideas involving... Uh, I don't know if there's a product like this out there, but something that uh, you can basically pump up to fill up any spaces or anything like that, but um, that could end badly if it was over-pumped. Um, yeah, just a strange idea I had about how you'd sort of hold things in or fill up loose spaces, you know, if you had something. I don't know if there's a product like that that even exists. But uh, it was just a bizarre thought. Um, but the reality of the situation is, I mean, a lot of these things of, you know, me being me, I always work out cu uh, basically cut price ways to do everything. And, you know, the cost of a truck versus buying this trailer for three grand and you don't necessarily have to buy a $6,000 van, you can buy a $2,500 van, you don't need to even buy a van at all. You know, there's a chance that this other old wagon is just going to be left rot for all intensive purposes. It's an alright car, you know, and I will say that it, it has, the propane system isn't great when it gets warm, the idle computer doesn't want to play ball all the time, but you know, that's just, um, you know, something that you, well, I've seen to live with it as I'm driving it, and you don't notice it when you're driving down the open road. It's only when you stop at the front gate that you notice it. But this could be doing absolutely nothing. It's got all the blue and trailer hitch and all the whole bullshit on it already. You know, it's got seats that fold down in the back, and there's nothing to say that I couldn't end up using that. If I don't want to use my own car, I could possibly use that to tow around one of these giant trailers as a start before I get a van, you know, or whatever, you know. And 
this is one of these things, you know, baby steps until you pay things off, until you build the money up, until you recoup what you've spent, you know, until you then go ahead and, and really go for it. I've looked at some of the prices of other guys, as I was saying. Um, it's intriguing. It is intriguing. I'm getting a feel for prices. The place I work at, weekdays, it's $99 an hour. Um, that's with the 10% the GST. And that will get you two guys in a truck. Now, there's guys who are two guys in a van. No trailer, just a van and two guys, $99 now. There's some that will drop as low as 65 an hour. Um, I don't know if that's two, I think that is two guys in a van. Uh, there's some that, you know, it's <laughs> the same place that come to move this guy the other day who cracked the mirror and all that. They, I found their one, they're using Google AdWords, that comes straight up, <laughs> right up near the top. And basically, a little bit tricky, you know, $35 per half hour. And then you've got to work out, well, that's, you know, 70 bucks an hour, you'd think. Well, they got there and they said, no, actually, it's 75 an hour. And then it doesn't include your 10% tax, so it come up to 82.50 an hour. So, no, they had $37 per half hour which works at $74 an hour, but they said 75 when they got to him, and then there's the 10% tax on top of that. So they've got ways of sort of, it, it's typical, like you've seen in all other businesses, where they give you this beautiful price, you know, oh, from $30, oh, well, that's just the call-out price for us to even turn up at your front door. It's going to cost you minimum $30. That's before we've, that's just by the time we've rang your doorbell, you know. All these little tricks and tr you know bits and pieces where they give you the price without the tax on it, and they uh, put it in half an hour instead of hours, and then they oh plus insurance costs on top of that, and fucking yada yada yada. You know it's all just giving you a nice low rate, and then by the time you add up the freaking tax, the insurance, the blah 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 blah, then you're just as screwed as if you had to use one of the guys who had a high price anyway. You know, and it's one of these things that a lot of them know I'm getting the feel for the ballpark price. And um, some of them are a hatful cheaper than where we are at work. And some of them are at the same price, but they only give you a van, not a full size truck. You know, and um, yeah, a lot of them do actually have an option of one guy in a van, which is something that I have noticed on. Uh, the vast majority of them, and uh, yeah, anyways, it's good that I've worked out this way to be able to, I mean, you know, in many senses, if you've got a trailer that's as big as a truck, you can have a van, and there's a particular Mitsubishi van that is very well known to be converted to propane, and they run beautifully on propane, and a former boss of mine we used to drive from here up to the capital every single day in one of those on propane, you know. But if you've got a trailer, there's nothing to say that I don't go and buy a light truck, like a, you know, a little Toyota pickup or something like that. And they also run fine on propane, you know. There's nothing to say that I can't drive a station wagon or just a plain bloody sedan, you know. It's one of these things that it opens you up to the option of using propane um, and also you end up with you can have better acceleration. I'll tell you right now, a lot of trucks they take a lot to wind up and while if you had a trailer full of friggin furniture it might take you a while to wind up, you probably still have better acceleration speeds in it um, but not that that's the real issue but the other thing that is a real kicker that you notice, especially if you drive these Isuzus that are made late 90s, early 1000s, the one that defies this is the, Mitsubishi, uh, is the Mazda. I have driven a Mazda, not a problem. And I 
when I was a courier, my Isuzu 525 wasn't like this either. Most of these Isuzu trucks, late 90s, early 1000s, the bastards don't want to go any more than 80 k's an hour, which from what I gather is, what's that, like 45 miles an hour or something like that. You cannot get the bastards over 80 k's an hour. And if you can, but the engine starts screaming, you know, and it, it, like, it wants to run comfortably at about 85 k's an hour. And you really don't want to go any more than 90 k's an hour. And if you bring it up to 100 k's an hour, which is the speed limit, the thing's squealing. Meanwhile, you can get all these passenger cars, you can get all these vans, you can get them to 100 k's an hour without breaking a sweat, and above that, you know, that flaming thing that I drive day to day, the big long wheelbase sedan, I've had that thing going over 100 miles an hour, you know, I've had it going 170 kilometres an hour, you know, and yeah, it was breaking a sweat to do that, but you ain't going to be stuck in the bloody slow lane with all these cars jammed up your ass while you're trying to drive interstate and you can't even make the speed limit without revving the engine so hard that you feel like you're almost damaging it. And do you really want to damage an engine that you know for a fact is going to cost you more than $5,000 just for the bare engine? <laughs> Let alone the amount of shit you'd have to go through to replace the damn thing where you need, you know, a hell of a lot of knowledge and a lot of flame and effort and a little hand pump crane to get the bloody thing out because they're so damn heavy engines. But uh, anyway, that's uh, been what I've been investigating and, and some of my thoughts and that was one of the things that I really wanted to be able to aim with, or two particular things. One, to be able to be driving with propane as opposed to diesel. Two, to be able to drive something that actually hits 100k an hour, the 62 mile an hour speed limit, um, or the occasional 110k an hour, which I think is about 67 mile an hour, or 68 mile an hour speed limits on some of these freeways um, that we have here, as opposed to being stuck in the frickin' slow lane while paying for diesel, which works out per kilometre damn near double the cost. So, uh, yeah, anyway, that's uh, what I've been up to.